Welcome back to our channel. Oh, I don't even know why I'm wearing this right now. Hold on. Welcome back to our channels, Warriors. We are still growing. If you haven't had that homie that would call it your Art LeBeau Sunday Night Slow Jams and make those dedications to those feed my ass, high ass, smash that subscribe button, go ahead and have them smash it right now. First and foremost, let me give a shout out to the newest patrons. Mr. Call Off, Tony, Armando, Nick, Frank, Alejandro, Phoenix Steve, Abuelita Irma, Trailero760, Trevor, Main Jail Yard, Erasmo, Benny, Sergio, Grant, and El Skid. We're almost to 100 patrons. If you haven't already signed up, hit the link in the description below. You are definitely missing out. This episode right here started off with me wearing some fucking headphones for no apparent reason. Right. Ooh, this one's going to be a banger. Ooh, this one's going to be spicy little jalapeno hot pepper. That's what I call my wife. Um, yeah, here we go. Hector, you're bullshitting, man. You're bullshitting, bro. You know more than what you lead on to know. You, 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 you holding back, my boy. <sighs> yes, yes, and yes, right? I do have the will to live, right? I do want to live. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> But I be seeing these other YouTube channels be putting out some content out there. Uh, Renegade Media is one of them. Shout out to Renegade Media. Jumped on the live to show some support the other day. Dude's on fire right now. Dude is on point with the information being put out. So this episode right here is going to be about Harpies 13. Harpies gang. Okay. Hector, the hell you know about Harpies? Well, as you guys know, I worked for the California Department of Corrections for 16 years as an officer, a sergeant, and a lieutenant, starting in the year 2006 and ending in 2022. Things were different in 2006. You had the heavy hitters, the leaders of the organizations put away in the security housing units and the shoes. Uh, Pelican Bay, Corcoran, right? Those were the guys calling the shots. Those were the guys giving orders. I started at Sentinella State Prison, a prison out in the desert, Imperial Valley to be precise. Back then, back in the day, 2006, since the heavy hitters and the leaders were uh, not on the main lines at the time, they didn't get released till 2014, there was something called the MESA system, okay? Meaning that every prison yard had individuals in charge on behalf of the higher-ups. You could say that there was a person for each block. We'll go ahead and call them bloqueros. You could say there was a person for each yard. We'll call them llaveros, key holders. Hey, Hector, I thought you guys, the prison guards, were the key holders. Well, yes, blue, green, right? <laughs> California moves different. We'll make a whole damn video on how California moves different. So, Harpies 13, Hector. You ever run into any of them in there? Yes. To me, Harpies was a... Okay, you have 18th Street. 18th Street was huge. It seemed like every damn inmate in there had an 18, a 1-8, a 18, a 6-6-6, a best Barrio 18 Street tattoo. Holy shit, man. 18th Street was rolling deep. But this isn't about 18th Street. This is about harpies. While it may not have been as big as 18th Street, to me, from my observations as a young Eager correctional officer wanting to fight some crime. They had a more of a, from my perspective, more of a white fence, old school, traditional. And I'm not saying 18th Street ain't traditional, right? That's not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that Harpies is white fence. What I'm saying to me was Harpies was more of a, that. Not so much large in numbers, but but smaller and closer, almost like a family. And this could be leading on to like 
my gathering after leaving the department, right? My knowledge. I told you about the MESA system. I told you about individuals working on behalf of the higher ups, the leaders, the organizations, right? The only reason I'm putting this video out is to let you know I do do be knowing, knowing what I be talking about, right? So you don't be saying I be bullshit and holding back. Well, I am holding back, but you know what I mean. You could have more than one leader having their hand in the pot on each prison yard. Meaning, hey, man, you're making some money. I want some of that. You're going to give me that, right? As a matter of fact, you're going to give me one third of what you got. The name, the name of the leader of Harpies stood out, right? That's not a normal name as far as an everyday name. Mind you, I was new, man. I was green, literally. Like, okay, when I say green, yeah, green uniform. But I was new, like a cherry. Uh, but these names always stood out, right? Like, oh, okay, so-and-so. I remember on A-Yard. I remember A-Yard who was working... On behalf of who, right? Could have been somebody from South Los, if you know what I mean. Could have been... Uh, so, the OG COs would put us up on game. Hey, this is this dude's working for this guy right here from uh, Kuka. Okay, boom. This guy's working over here, right here. Boom. All right. So... Power struggles. Yeah, I already talked about power vacuums and this and that. But that name always stood out. So when they hit the main lines, the heavy hitters, that leader of Harpies hit, hit the main lines. And I remember keeping up. This is one of the perks of being a sergeant and a lieutenant. Aside from shopping on Amazon on the computer, I used to look people up. I used to look heavy hitters up. That's how I know. That's why I'm on point. Oh, they're here at this prison. Boom. They're here. They're here at this prison. Okay. They got to transfer here. Right. I should have been IGI. I told you my, uh, I wasn't a suck dick puppet boy. So they never made me IGI, but fuck, I could probably run circles around half of them. No disrespect. Maybe they know some stuff. Maybe they don't. I don't know. I know what I know. So. Oh, man. Dudes, those heavy hitters were hitting different prisons. Boom, 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 right? And then you had Rico Axe raids on the streets going after the secretaries, right? I've talked about wives. I've talked about daughters. I've talked about females working on behalf of these leaders. And then... The, the, the feds will just move in and just gaffle everybody up after years of surveillance, years of gathering evidence, right? I am a huge fucking David Ayer fan. David Ayer, the producer, man. He's made movies like Training Day, End of Watch, Harsh Times. You guys ever need, you guys need to see the movie Harsh Times. Uh, the Tax Collector, Street Kings, right? These movies are all right up my alley, man. They're about like law enforcement, gangs, drugs, just a like, crime. It's just like, your boy, yeah, some people like watching, you know, some people watch the Jeffrey Dahmer documentaries. I like me some uh, shootout movies, right? Godfather, Goodfellas, stuff like that. The movie The Tax Collector may or may not be based on 100% facts. The movie Tax Collector may or may not have family members involved with, with what I'm talking about right now. Exactly what I'm talking about right now. The movie Tax Collector, if you don't know, do your research. There was an actor in the movie Tax Collector, Conejo, right? A good friend of mine. 
It's a small world. It's a small world, especially leaving the department, how you meet new people, you get introduced to old people, you just a small network, right? Especially a guy like me that didn't carry myself like a POS, right? Like a, like a piece of shit, right? As a prison guard, as a correctional officer, I was firm, fair, and consistent and professional, right? So if you work in a prison, you think you're going to wild out, you think you're going to be fucking out of pocket, just know that whatever the fuck you do in your occupation will follow you outside of your occupation occupation i'm a i'm a prime example of this right i carried myself with with self-dignity respect and honor i showed people the respect i had the respect coming and my life has been fucking smooth since i have left the department right smooth as fuck (laughs) it's been great actually (laughs) here we go (laughs) conejo was a member of Harpies 13 was, is, if you know what I mean. He's from Harpies, straight up. (laughs) He represents Harpies, all things Harpies, okay? He has an interesting, interesting story. Oh, man. Uh, That's, I knew about him before I met the guy, right? Just from the documentaries, the dude has done a lot of uh, interviews, podcasts, and I'm like, oh, this dude's story, man. This dude was on the run down south in Mexico for like 15, 16 years. And I thought it was like a trip because I was in the department for 16 years, right? (sighs) He's doing big things now, huge things. As a matter of fact, his album, his latest album, Drop today or yesterday, today, the reset, right? The reset. Go check it out. Go share it. Go like it. Go buy it. Go download it. Go comment on it. Show the homie some love, right? The dude is doing good things, big things, right? If a guy that came from the hood doing big, huge things, right? Pushing a positive message. Doing his thing, right? So he came out in the movie The Tax Collector. He's from Harpies. I was actually at the private event yesterday for the reset, right? Uh, In LA. It was cool. It was cool, right? And again... I'm able to talk and communicate with people because I'm not a fucking idiot. (laughs) Here we go. (laughs) Because I got communication skills and people skills. So what ended up happening to that leader of Harpies, Hector? Right? You said he got it. You said you, you remember hearing his name. You remember who was working on behalf of him. You remember him hitting different prisons. What happened to that guy? Well, man, right now it is fucking wild in the California Department of Corrections. As far as political, political, politics, politics, period, politics, boom. The recent killings of certain individuals. And I made a video a couple days ago. Like every, I don't plan none of these fucking videos. Let me tell you that. I don't prep. I don't write shit down. I just fucking sit here and I talk. <clears throat> you can go back to my, my videos prior. I talked about a certain heavy hitter, probably one of the first ones, maybe the second one, if you're not counting the hot shot, but uh, Calipatria State Prison, Calipat, one heavy hitter got hit, and who did he get hit by? Not one of his equals, let me tell you, he got hit by basically fucking foot soldiers, 
right? Which is a cardinal rule, which goes against the Ten Commandments. I told you guys yesterday, if you guys need to be keeping up, man, this channel ain't, if you, if you ain't catching up, it's going to go over your head. I'm telling you right now, and it's, it's designed like that for a reason. I want you to live. Help. <laughs> Help. <laughs> Well, in essence, you had two individuals that were foot soldiers that were given orders. Hey, go take out this big homie right here. Go take out this leader. Then their heads are thinking, oh, man, I'm made right here. They're going to open up the book. Say, I'm about to go get, I'm about to, woo, I'm about to wild out right now. Watch me, fellas. I'm about, I, I made it. I made it. In my criminal career, I made it to the top. This is it. This is it. Well, no, that's not what happened. There's a video on it. I'm telling you, that caught me off guard. When those two individuals, who may or may not be from Monrovia, killed that one guy, that took the whole, that took everybody back. Like, staff members, green, blue, IGI, calls were going out, what the fuck, what does this mean? Boom, boom, boom. That took, because, again, does this mean this is a new... This is the new program now. We're going to have these dudes hitting these dudes. This is interesting. This is wild. Well, those two fucking individuals ended up getting put in the hat. Bad. Bad, bad, bad. Holy shit, man. They thought they won the fucking Super Bowl. Man, they didn't even win the fucking Little League Series in Tijuana. Let me tell you that, man. Holy, whatever the fuck opposite of Super Bowl is. You fucking goddamn golly G. Estás cortado, G. Here they are. They took somebody out thinking they made their bones wrong. Er, nope. Don't pass go. Don't collect your $200. You're done for. They attempted to kill those two individuals at every fucking prison that they touched down on. And I am telling you right now, they were legitimate attempts on their lives holy shit just it's probably it's a miracle they're not dead how many times how many different times they got stabbed at the different prisons and what's fucked up is that in their head they thought they were still good and i've seen this over and over and over again where people think i'm good i'm good after getting stabbed, and we know as staff members, as Green, we gotta we have to protect these guys. We know more information than they know. We maybe they're clouded. Their judgment is clouded. They're in the trenches, right? They don't see the big picture. They don't see that they just got used and abused. It reminds me of a funny story. Well, it's not really fucking funny. My buddy from Calipad, he's now at RJD. He told me a story. We were talking about this. I said, and Calipad's wild with it. He, uh, I said, hey, bro, wasn't it crazy every time these fools would get stabbed, like, bad? And then they would say, like, I'm good, I'm good, put me back on the yard. And he's like, oh, yeah, he starts laughing. We start laughing, right, not to be disrespectful, because it was just, imagine that, man. You're all stabbed up bad, bad. They're trying to kill you right now. And you're like, I'm good, I'm good. It was just a check, yeah. No, dude, fuck no. So he was telling me a story that the, he was an ad seg back in the day. Calipat, the motherfucker, got stabbed up, right? And that the guy told him, I'm good. And the LT said, you're not good. Look at your face. Oh, man. Because he knows that there's no mirrors in prison, especially like an ad seg like that. You probably got one on the wall. It's all blurry. But imagine the psychological. You got somebody telling you you're not good. Look at your face. I said, was his face fucked up? He's like, nah, I just wanted to fuck with him. But he really wasn't good. He wasn't good. He was in bad standings. So now that I've painted the damn picture, not too clear. I can't paint the picture too clear, right? I got to leave a little bit of smudge marks. Did every influential heavy hitter inmate agree with that call? That they used two foot soldiers to take out a, a heavy hitter? Nope. Maybe the leader of uh, Harpies was one of them. Maybe he was very vocal and saying that was not cool. Rightfully so, man. Is it ever cool to be used anybody for anything, right? Like, let's say 
there's a little kid down the street. You're like, here, kid, give me fucking, here's $2. Go down to the store, buy me a stick of gum. You could keep $1 for yourself. The fucking little bastard goes. You take the gum. You take the $2. The kid's assed out. You got nothing. You just used the little fuck, right? <laughs> but in this case, people are getting stabbed, murdered, barbaric killings, bloodshed. California moves different. On one of those days that one of those guys from Monrovia got fucking stabbed. They were on the same prison yard. That heavy hitter did not go out to yard. Did purposely did not go out to yard to show his distaste. To show he wasn't down with the buffoonery. Can I say that? Dispensa. It wasn't down with that call, right? Fuck. <sighs> um... And they use that ex- as an excuse to to take him out. To say like, oh, this dude is siding with these guys. He should be siding with us guys. In reality, he was just calling it like he saw it, right? I think that's where I'm going to fucking stop it, man. For sure. <sighs> Prison is fucking crazy. It is violent. Gangs are violent. Gangs are crazy. But your story doesn't have to end there. And here is the message for today. Talked about Conejo. A guy that I consider a good friend. A guy that is killing it in the entertainment industry. A guy that has shown what hard work, perseverance, and dedication to a craft can accomplish. The dude didn't just start yesterday. The dude has been grinding and grinding and grinding for decades. Putting out music. Putting out music when he was on the run down south. You know, it's 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 cool to see, right? It gives hope for the youngsters still out there. And one thing about Conejo, man, is that like, he doesn't forget about the little people. Let me tell you that much. And I'm kind of the same way because like, you know, I'd be doing my thing or even whenever I try to promote or promoted a sergeant, promoted a lieutenant, the officers and my friends would tell me, hey, don't forget about us little people. And I would tell them like this, hey, don't trip. Those of you guys that walked with me are going to ride with me. And I always meant it. That's what I always said. And that's what I see with, uh, with Conejo, man. Fucking solid dude, stand-up individual, right? And that was my two cents right there on the Harpies gang. You know, I didn't uh I didn't talk about like the size and numbers, even though I did do my research. It said like 200 members, right? I didn't talk about uh the locations, even though I did do my research, it said like Figaro and Normandy, right? Because I don't talk about stuff I don't know about. Right. So I did have to do my research to look at that. But um, yeah, for sure. That gang definitely moves different. There's a lot of famous people. There's a lot of high, how do you call it, man? High, um, high notoriety individual that came from that gang. With that, they always do the right thing. Stand up for what is right. Help the youngsters. And um, yeah, man. If we unite it for the sake of good, we'll be able to fucking go up against without, you know, all the BS up at the top that's currently going on. With that, keep pushing forward.